Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, now we will discuss that uh, whether this monopoly equilibrium or the optimum output quantity choice what monopoly is deciding to maximize his profit whether that is socially optimal at all or not or whether there is any uh, because of this kind of monopoly element or monopoly producer monopoly is getting some positive profit no you have seen that right. So, whether uh, that positive profit is creating some social welfare loss or anything that we will discuss now. Okay. So, this kind of uh, 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 one important concept uh, we will tell here that actually what we have derived in the last, uh, last lecture you will see that price whole into 1 minus 1 upon elasticity that should be m c because this entire thing is the m r right m r equals to m c is the profit maximizing condition that we have. Done. So, we can write that price will be m c by this third bracketed component 1 minus 1 upon E. Okay. So, this we can write that m c into 1 by 1 minus 1 upon E. Okay. So, this is the thing that so, monopoly is a price uh, setter or price uh, not taker rather price maker right. So, he is setting his own price how much price he will set uh, for each unit of his product what he is producing right. So, when he is setting price what strategy he will follow this strategy he will follow whatever marginal cost he is facing okay, he will make marginal cost into something to set his price that into whatever the factor that factor is greater than 1 why that factor is greater than 1 well this elasticity value we told that should be greater than 1. So, this is greater than 1. 1 minus this is a positive fraction, 1 minus that thing is a positive fraction say fraction means suppose 2 third. So, 1 by 2 third is 3 by 2 right greater than 1. So, since the denominator is a positive fraction 1 by that is all is actually as a positive number and which is greater than 1 right. So, suppose I am a monopolist my so if it is this third bracketed term is greater than 1 we, we are we understood right. So, suppose that is 3 by 2. Okay. So, if my marginal cost whatever amount of output I am producing okay, at that level if my marginal cost I am facing that say uh, 100 rupees 100 I will set price of my product 100 into 3 by 2 per unit of my product that much price. This much is my marginal cost into this factor. Okay. This factor sometimes is called markup factor, markup. So, monopoly is putting some uh, more than one fraction uh, multiplying with his marginal cost. So, mar markup factor is more than one, this factor is called markup factor. Okay. So, markup factor is more than one and since this is the markup factor this kind of pricing strategy of the monopolist is called markup pricing behavior markup pricing behavior okay markup pricing behavior of a monopolist and that is why price is always above marginal cost if you understand the diagram this kind of marginal cost curve was there say suppose this kind of marginal revenue was there suppose this was the demand curve and this was the marginal revenue curve right. So, we told this is the point where MRE both the conditions are satisfied and he is setting this is the price right. So, look at here this is the marginal cost, but price is this price is always above the marginal cost right. So, markup pricing behavior is there. Okay. Now, we can also if you can remember what was our equilibrium condition in a competitive market there price equals to marginal cost because there MR was exactly equals to price if the market is competitive we have shown that right. So, there if we ask was there any markup factor in the competitive market or a competitive, competitive producer was simply price taker okay? he was not making that his price. If I think 
this kind of price making behavior they are also competitive market. I can think of yes he was also following some markup pricing kind of behavior where markup factor was only one. So, he was setting his price equals to exactly m c into 1 markup factor is 1. So, m c. So, he was setting his quantity that much quantity was producing where market price existing market price is exactly equals to his m c. Okay. How that market factor equals to 1 you can reach this entire third bracketed component should be 1. If this entire third bracketed component should be 1. So, if I think of that markup factor is 1 in a competitive market. So, definitely this third bracketed term what was 1 by 1 minus 1 by absolute elasticity this entire component should be 1. This entire component should be 1 means that this entire this first bracketed denominator should be 1. And first bracketed denominator should be 1 means this component should be 0. 1 by absolute elasticity that component should be 0, when that can be 0? When elasticity thing is infinitely large, you know that in a competitive market demand curve is horizontal, a horizontal demand curve at every point, what is the elasticity value? Infinitely large. So, whatever we learn they are right, everything we are getting in a different way in the markup pricing behavior kind of sense if we think of whether they are yes we know that in a competitive market uh, producer was not setting at all any markup pricing behavior kind of thing he was taking the price simply ok he is a price taker. But even if we think that he was also setting his price of course, he was putting that markup factor equals to 1 ok just an extension just a clarification kind of thing we are enlightening ourselves with a little bit little bit uh, broadening kind of uh, knowledge or understanding about the markup pricing behavior ok that is the thing. So, monopoly will always set the price above the marginal cost because markup price markup factor is more than 1 ok and as a result monopoly is getting some positive profit. But the question is due to this kind of behavior ok whether society is losing anything or no ok ok let us go for a new diagram say suppose Suppose this is the demand curve, this is the MR curve, marginal revenue and of course, you are measuring quantity this side and that side all other revenues, cost, uh, price everything. So, this is the suppose in our notation AD kind of demand curve ok. Then suppose this is our MC line, I am not drawing all other, other curves ok, uh, total average total cost curve, average variable cost curve though we are not drawing here because the, the target what is to discuss those curves are not required to discuss them ok. So, at this point MR equals to MC and second order condition both are satisfied. So, this is the origin. So, it is telling that this much quantity should produce and this should be the price per unit of output ok. So, this should be O P star this should be the price per unit of output and O Q star is the total amount of output he is going to produce ok. Now, the question is if competitive behavior is what price equals to marginal cost right. So, price equals to marginal cost kind of behavior if that producer follows ok how much quantity should produce and how much price he should set. Look this point say suppose this is E point and this is suppose E 1 point at E 1 point this point right price equals to marginal cost because this is the demand curve that is the price line demand curve is the price line we have told ok and this is the MC line. So, if that monopolist follow competitive behavior he should produce this much quantity and he should set this much price. If that is the case what could be the total surplus generated within the society? So, this is the marginal cost line right. So, basically this could be this upper triangular kind of area, this could be the consumer surplus and this lower area could be the producer surplus. If you can remember supply curve because when we discuss uh, surplus producer or consumer surplus no we had this kind of supply curve, this kind of demand curve right if you can remember right and we told that this was the 
producer surplus and this was the consumer surplus right where this is the demand curve that is the supply curve right. We have already learned that M C curve is nothing but the supply curve or supply curve or a segment of the M C curve is the supply curve right. So, we can think of that uh, alternatively say suppose if you produce until this quantity you know O say suppose this is Q 1 what is your total cost? Suppose this is a there is no fixed cost this is a long run situation this is the marginal cost curve okay. it is a long run situation until O Q 1 you are producing okay. what is your total cost? Although average total cost curve is not here through which we can easily derive the total cost, but I can tell that if I integrate this marginal cost no, this area, this area, this this red color kind of area, okay, this kind of area, no, this 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 kind of area, red color, okay, that area is representing what? That area is representing basically integration between zero to q one. M C D Q right. So, if marginal cost thing if you if you integrate within a range what you will get? You will get definitely total cost if there is no fixed cost and if it is a short run this thing will be total variable cost and fixed cost if you add total cost you will get. So, we can tell that this mono, this producer this monopolist if he somehow behave competitive kind of uh, solution or uh, uh, follow competitive behavior. If he produce Q 1 amount of output and set price equals to say Q 1 E 1 per unit quantity right. So, this upper triangular area will be the consumer surplus no doubt about that, but the producer surplus will be this area that is quite clear now, because his total cost is this and his total revenue is basically this green color rectangular area this 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 because that much quantity he is producing and this much is the price per unit quantity right. So, that is the total revenue out of that this much of cost this much this area this area which we are representing integration of marginal cost okay, within the 0 to uh, q 1 within that range right that is representing his total cost. So, definitely this area is his revenue minus cost that is the producer surplus. So, total social surplus could be generated within the society is this, 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 this kind of area. Okay. Suppose this is say P 1. Okay. So, A suppose this is say Z, A Z E E 1 that kind of area here is the E point okay. that kind of area is the total social surplus can be generated in the society. Now, when he is behaving monopoly kind of thing no not competitive behavior right. Of course, he is producing less amount of quantity O Q star is way below O Q 1 right less amount of quantity and he is setting more amount of price per unit of the quantity. So, due to that what is happening? Of course, first implication is that consumer surplus is cut in from this larger triangle A P 1 U 1 that could be the consumer surplus if the, this producer follow competitive behavior. Instead of that if he follows monopoly behavior consumer surplus is reducing from here to suppose this is say E 2 point. A P star E 2 that area. So, consumer surplus is falling way above. Okay. So, consumer surplus is falling, but producer surplus because producer is now producing only this quantity and per unit quantity this much price he is getting. Okay. So, this is his total revenue this rectangular area. So, producer producer's total revenue is basically producer's total revenue producers uh, total revenue sales revenue here producer because only one producer monopoly only one producer is there that is apostrophe after that yes we are writing. So, that must be P star E 2 
q star o that area p star e2 q star o that rectangular area is the total producer producers revenue out of that this integration of m c d q 0 within q star because q star is his output quantity when he behaves as a monopoly profit maximizer right. So, that is representing basically uh, this blue color blue color shaded area this area ok his, his total cost ok that is the this portion ok. So, that is giving that basically this uh, red color shaded area this red color shaded area as the producer surplus. So, producer surplus is actually whatever the consumer surplus is falling out of that this rectangular area is appropriated by producer as producer surplus, but this triangular area is the net loss of the society ok. So, let us let us now not that area that area is the net loss to the consumers and this area is the net loss to the producer. So, producers is losing this much and gaining this rectangular area ok, but so, uh, consumers are net losing this triangular area. So, if we if we if we if we draw a new uh, appraise diagram. So, what is happening ok, this is the demand curve ok this is the MC line and suppose this is the MR line, this is the demand curve right. So, output quantity is cutting from here to here, this is the competitive equilibrium, competitive equilibrium, this point is competitive quantity choice, quantity choice and this point is basically monopoly quantity choice ok ok. So, and price is which price could be becoming say P 1 that is becoming uh, could be P 1 in the competitive market. So, this is a competitive price this is the monopoly price competitive price this is monopoly price ok. So, look at here due to quantity curtainment ok what is happening this area now which could be a part of the social surplus that is getting lost completely ok. Because this down portion this portion is this green colored portion of this overall shaded area suppose this is A, B and C this area. So, A, B, C is the total dead weight loss, why dead weight loss I am coming out of that suppose this is K point, K, B, C that loss is from the producer side and A, K, C this is the loss by the producers. this is the consumers, consumers because so many consumers are there that is why after S apostrophe ok. So, A K C this area is the consumers loss of the surplus and K B C is the loss of the producers of the surplus, but producers are gaining this additional surplus which could be a part of the consumer surplus if he behave competitive or uh, he if he follow competitive behavior ok, uh, then this uh, this rectangular area could be a part of the consumer surplus. Now, that is appropriated simply transferred from one group of the society to the another group of the society or another member of the society from the consumers group to the monopoly ok. So, this segment is not at all a loss, but this segment ok is a loss to the society because this is no neither producer nor the consumers are gaining that ok. So, this is a dead weight loss A B C. So, monopoly although getting a positive profit ok, his profit as such is not creating any societal loss. What is making the loss for the society? 
because of his monopoly behavior okay uh, total amount of output what is produced within the society that is less okay and as a result some dead weight loss is generated within the society which is a burden to the society so we can comment make a comment that monopoly solution or monopoly equilibrium is not an ideal equilibrium or desirable equilibrium for the society okay look at here what is the source of this dead weight loss people or more specifically the customers who are lying between these two within this segment what are their willingness to pay look at here the person who is standing here his willingness to pay is here who is standing here his willingness to pay is here so the people who are lying within this segment which in our notation we are telling this is q star and this is q1 we are telling right so segment within q star q1 within that segment okay whole lot of customers are there whose willingness to pay for that product is above the marginal cost of the producer or the cost of or uh, cost of generating that product in the society producer when producing that additional unit no this additional unit further additional unit and so on he has to incur some additional cost but whatever additional cost he is going to incur people potential customer who are there they are willing to give an more than way above that additional cost so if somehow that transaction could happen somehow this producer produce that commodity and customers purchase that commodity both customer and producer gain can gain as a result some surplus could generate it within the society that is not happening because of monopoly behavior okay so what i am telling that within that segment q star q1 within that segment although okay although profitable or mutual beneficially benefit mutually beneficial kind of transaction possibilities are open because marginal cost is way below that the marginal revenue kind of thing or willingness to pay by the customer okay so effective transaction possibility is open there but because of monopoly behavior that transaction is not happening in the market that transaction is not happening in the society as a result society is losing and that loss is quantified by this abc this triangular kind of area this is the dead weight loss of the monopoly behavior which is a burden to the society okay so monopoly so uh, to sum up monopoly is not a desirable solution or outcome for a societal optimal uh, welfare point of view okay so definitely then government will try to control that monopoly so certain discussions are there in your book right uh, what what should be the public policy or government policy towards a monopoly right so four policies are there it is mentioned in your book so you can uh, nothing much to understand those things you can read you will understand one thing is that okay to try to incorporate incorporate more competitive element more competitive element how we can do that or how government can do that okay there is a monopoly producer say if you can see that that in our childhood maybe in 1970s 80s that time right that bath soap if we uh, if we in, in indian market perhaps only one variety of bath soap was there live boy and that time red color bar was there these days to some uh, means uh, oval kind of live boy different types of bars are there that time only one this kind of uh, box kind of red color bars are there okay this kind of that kind of bar was there okay that is the only so that time who are the producer of the live boy bath soap right i think hindustan liver which later becomes hindustan unilever that company's name now it's unilever right so hindustan liver was the only uh, like monopoly producer of that bar if there is no other bar was available bath soap bar was available in the market right so eventually new new producers are invented so that time suppose government is telling that if some new company comes a new producer comes with another uh, bath soap okay we will give from government side we will give some incentive 
Okay. So, as a result a new producer is coming suppose they are coming with say new variety of bar called lux. Okay. In that way new new products coming right. So, that through that kind of mechanism if governments want to infuse or uh, invite more competition within the industry government can do that. We will give certain kind of benefit to the producers if you enter into the same sort of product market if you want to produce same sort of product uh, uh, and, uh, and sell in the market right. So, that is one strategy okay, incorporate more competition into the market. Regulation uh, government can regulate that monopoly right. So, in India there is an act called MRTP act, MRTP act monopolies and restrictive trade practices act. Through that act, this kind of acts in different countries have different acts, this kind of acts, and those acts together are called antitrust laws. Antitrust, antitrust laws, okay. Those through that antitrust laws actually government used to control that monopoly because when there is a monopoly element, it it is it has a tendency to uh, produce less amount of quantity and try to extract more price for each unit of that com commodity. Okay. So, government used to uh, uh, keep some watch, watch, uh, thorough watch kind of thing or critical watch on the, their activities and all. MRTP is a similar kind of act in India. right? So, that is one way. In fact, you, you know that natural monopoly we have discussed. right? Natural monopoly where say this kind of thing your uh, average cost curve, average total cost curve is continuously falling and suppose demand curve this kind. Okay. So, this is the total whatever total quantity demanded in the in the market or by the entire society is there of that product okay. within that segment right. If one single producer is continuously producing he will face more and more or he will face more economies of scale okay. average cost per unit of the product will falling will be falling and falling right. So, in that case suppose government is telling that no, no, no you have to follow the marginal cost behavior. Okay, a price equals to marginal cost behavior or competitive behavior. If government force that producer to follow marginal cost pricing principle, right? Definitely that producer will be making low loss, right? Because your your average total cost is falling means marginal cost is below that average total cost. So suppose this much is producing, suppose this is demand curve, so this is the demand curve, and suppose this is the marginal revenue curve. So definitely he will produce. Uh, price equals to if government is fo forcing that price equals to marginal cost right. So, this is the marginal cost. So, he has to face that much of price and his average cost average cost will be this much per unit right. So, definitely this rectangular area with a negative sign will be his profit. So, he cannot tolerate he cannot sustain. So, government has to give some subsidy and that is why you will see that and alternatively if he allows that no, you do monopoly behavior, it will generate some profit for itself, but it will generate parallelly some dead old loss for the society. Okay. So, another thing is that say uh, another uh, that say government can uh, nationalize say private monopolist uh, monopolies are there, government can nationalize those private monopolies. Uh, uh, nationalized means what government is taking up them okay, and telling that those are government entities. Exactly in that you will see that the kind of e examples we gave where that natural monopoly is there like telephone distribution, electricity distribution, water supply you will realize that in real life no all of these kinds of things or most of these kinds of things are controlled by the government or some government agencies okay, like municipal authority local government municipal authority means some local government right. So, those kinds of agencies usually because uh, if you allow their uh, monopoly behavior it will it will create some dead or loss to the society. If you allow or if you force them to follow competitive behavior they will make some loss and you unless you give that subsidy to their loss they will not be operating at all. Okay. So, best way uh, is the government nationalize them government occupying them. Okay. So, that is another strategy. So, these four are basically strategies what government or public authority can do towards monopolies. Okay, one is try to incorporate more competition, try to regularize the monopoly practices, right? Uh, uh, keep a thorough vigil on their activities, right? Then 
other you can nationalize those entities private monopolies are there you are uh, making them public monopolies or nationalize uh, uh, national agencies or government agencies okay and another is that doing nothing okay actually there is a there is a nobel laureate economist uh, called stigler stigler okay he is sometimes told that uh, in your book that story is there you please read you will get interest okay he told that government should not do anything okay because whatever way government will uh, try to intervene into this kind of monopoly market none of them are having absolute beneficial effect okay some positive side is there parallelly some negative sides also are there okay so in that way in that way uh, uh, these are the basically the so what let me let me summarize what we have discussed what is the monopoly's optimum so the producer who were operating earlier in a competitive market, if he allow that producer to operate in a monopoly kind of product market, what will be his quantity optimum quantity choice? And we compare those with the competitive optimum output choice. So, definitely competitive optimum output choice will be more output quantity, monopoly will be less output quantity and price will be in the monopoly in the more. Resultant is what? What is the implication? There will be some social welfare loss, dead weight loss will be generated by the monopolist. Okay. If that is the case, monopoly is not a desirable solution for the society, what public policy or government authority or yeah, society, social authority or country's authority can do, what kind of policies country authorities can take towards the monopoly. So, these kinds of four options are there. So, with this we complete the, our discussion of monopoly kind of thing. So, in the next class we will discuss that if this producer given his same cost structure, if he goes to operate in a monopolistically competitive kind of product market what will be his optimum output decision and so on in this way we will complete oligopoly market as well ok. Let us stop here.